Hello, my dear Lana. I'm delighted once again to see you for our today's lesson. This is Monzia, your instructor for strategy, governance, and ethics. Today, we'll be introducing another topic, which is ethics. However, this topic is not detached from our other topic, which was a corporate governance. Uh, what is the need for ethics under this subject or cause units? Directors, by virtue of their positions, are tasked with certain responsibilities. They have a duty, better known as the fiduciary duty. For a director, therefore, to effectively perform their fiduciary duty, they need to have certain values. Those values are supposed to empower and guide them so that they can act in the best interest of the parties for whom they represent. So it is essential that anyone learning the unit strategy, governance, and ethics he is introduced to the subject or the concept of ethics so that they are able to link what directors do and the need for ethics in performing their work. We will start off by introducing a few concepts under the item professional values and ethical principles. What is a profession and what is professionalism? Uh, It is important for us to remember that for a director or for an individual to be appointed to serve as a director of a company, they need to possess certain qualifications. Which qualifications we considered under the topic duties and responsibilities, sorry, duties and appointment of directors. When we're considering the mix of skills and competences for directors, we identified the qualifications that an individual needs to possess for them to qualify for appointment as a director of a company. And one of those qualities was that the directors need to have certain level of training and experience for them to effectively serve and make meaningful contribution to board deliberations. Therefore, directors are expected to be professionals in their own capacity. Uh, they need some level of training and they need some level of skill and experience. That is why they will in the first place qualify to be appointed as directors of a company. As long as a director qualifies as a profession and they also possess the values or the acceptable ethics, then we will automatically expect that director to act for the best interest of the people they represent. Uh, what is a profession? A profession can be defined as a body of theory and knowledge. A body of theory and knowledge used to support public interest. public interest. A, person, a profession is supposed to, to exhibit professionalism. Professionalism uh, Professionalism simply means uh, taking action 
taking action to support the public interest. Uh, a profession or a professional he is going to be characterized by a number of important features. One is that a profession is backed up by a body of theory and knowledge through which the professional acquires the education and a training to qualify to be a member of that profession. Two, a profession is governed by a code of conduct and values which guide members of that profession in their practice. And three, a professional is also characterized by the acceptance of a duty to society as a whole, which means that professionals do not necessarily what they do what they do for their own benefit, but rather they use their abilities and knowledge and understanding to benefit the larger society as a whole. So we are identifying important features of a profession which are very beneficial or useful. And feature number one is that a profession is backed up by a body of knowledge, a body of theory and knowledge theory and knowledge. The usefulness of this is that this is what is used for acquiring the training and education of that profession. Training and education. Another feature we're identifying is the existence of a code of conduct and values. So existence of a code of conduct and values. And we're saying that this code is the one that guides or dictates how members of this profession should act. And the three, it's also characterized by the acceptance of a duty of duty to the larger society now by virtue of being professionals uh, our professionalism introduces certain obligations to members of that profession. And that duty is that the members of the profession should not engage in any to discredit the profession. Now, the a need for professionalism among board members is that we will have trust and confidence that because directors are professionals they will always be guided by their professionalism and will always without the need for so much supervision act to benefit the larger of the people they represent uh, as a director, you're expected to exercise professional judgment. Professional judgment.
basically uh directors especially the non-executive directors are there to exercise to check the excesses of the executive directors and their main responsibility is to ensure that uh, people do not the management and the leadership of the company does not take advantage of situations of conflict of interest in the organization. If the non-executive directors are going to exercise their oversight role, they must be in a position to exercise professional judgment. Professional judgment is making decisions that are best in the particular situation without undue influence. Right? So, professional judgment is the ability of a director making decisions that are best in a with undue influence. Without undue influence. This independence is of a particular importance to the non executive directors. The interest of the stakeholders will be properly represented or taken care of. A director should bring to all decisions an unprejudiced and informed mind. Uh, however, this does not prevent the director from uh, seeking external advice uh, from others when necessary. So we are saying every time a director deliberates on an issue concerning the organization and the interest of the shareholders, uh, while voting or while making a decision on that issue, they should not be enticed. They should not be influenced to decide in a manner that would not have been considered the best under those circumstances. Right? So that they are, by exercising professional judgment, they will lead or take those decisions that they believe are the best in that situation regardless of what others might think. Uh, I did mention that because of the positions that professionals occupy, uh, they are asked to engage in complex and Unpredictable, unpredictable tasks on society's behalf. And professionalism uh, introduces certain obligations to members of the profession and particularly the obligation to comply with standards and laws. So that every time a director acts they must make sure that they are upholding and complying with the relevant laws, regulations, and standards which govern the conduct of a business and what they do. Now, confidentiality. As a professional, you are expected to maintain a certain level of secrecy. Uh, we will define confidentiality as a relationship between two or more persons in which the information communicated between them is to be kept, kept in confidence. So confidentiality implies a relationship 
between two or more persons. Two or more persons. Uh, in which the information in which the information communicated between them communicated between them is to be kept in confidence. In confidence. Now, basically, uh, what is the need for confidentiality in business? Uh, by virtue of their positions as directors of the company, directors will access certain information which they are obliged to keep secret. To cite a few examples, Businesses or organizations have trade secrets, which is what they use as a strength against their competitors. In addition, companies have employees. They have an employee database, again, uh, which has quite an amount of information about their employees, which they are expected to keep in confidence. Directors, again, by virtue of their position, have access to certain information better known as companies owned information or inside information, which information is not supposed to leak or be known by the public. By being professionals, then the directors are expected to observe confidentiality of this information so that they do not jeopardize the prospects of the company. Now, what introduces the need for confidentiality? Uh, the need for confidentiality will arise in three ways. One, as an ethical duty informed by a code of ethics or code of conduct. So if you are a member of a profession, Every profession has its own code of conduct. That code introduces a duty of confidentiality on the professional member. Two, our confidentiality or the duty of confidentiality will arise as a statutory duty governed by professional regulations or a particular legislative scheme. And three, it will arise as a contractual duty through a service agreement, employment contract, or client agreement. Uh, the ethical duty of confidentiality. Ethical duty of confidentiality. What is the need for confidentiality to a profession? The, what informs the need for confidentiality is the fact that uh, you want to provide that freedom. If you're a professional dealing with the client, we want to provide freedom to the client to be able to open up freely so that based on that information, you're going to act or take the best action to solve the issues or problems that the client faces. So ethical duties of confidentiality arise or usually arise under one of the ethical and conduct frameworks, uh, such as the codes of conduct, uh, codes of ethics, uh, guidelines, or by virtue of membership or partnership, uh, of a particular profession or professional association. Professionals are not allowed to share confidential information uh, that they come into position or into possession in the course of their work. 
uh, professional secrecy is going to protect many things, as I said. Uh, it may protect a person's identity, like you cannot go, you cannot go, uh, the, that is uh, disclosing information, your marital status, the age of your employees. You have a duty to keep that secret. You have a duty to protect the company's own information because availability of this information to the public may interfere with the smooth operations of the market uh, for shares. And equally, you could not go out disclosing the company's trade secrets or trade secret information which the company uses to uh, to uh, build or to develop a competitive advantage over its competitors. Now, under which conditions will the professional secrecy apply? Uh, professional secrecy applies when the person who receives the information has a duty to respect the client's confidentiality. Again, professional secrecy will also apply when the information is private. And three, when the information is shared as part of a professional's job. The party who was giving you this information expected that by virtue of being a professional, you will go ahead to safeguard the secrecy of that information. Now, if we were to be specific, what is the need for confidentiality or confidentiality relating to the directors? A director who possesses confidential information must not disclose it to any other person or make use of it or act on it subject to the following exceptions. One, if disclosure is made solely for the company's purposes. Uh, two, if the disclosure is required by law. And three, if the board has authorized the director to give the disclosure. And four, if the disclosure will not prejudice the company. So the rule is very simple. A director who possesses confidential information he is not allowed to disclose that information unless under the three circumstances. It is made for the sole purpose of the company. Uh, the directors or the board has authorized the director to disclose. It is a requirement of law to disclose or if the disclosure he is not going to jeopardize or prejudice the company. Now, backing up professionalism and the need to act professionally is ethics. So the two go hand in hand and they are what are supposed to motivate directors to always think or put ahead the interests of the people they represent and not their interest. This brings us to the end of our lesson. Uh, I will see you in our next lesson when we discuss ethics. Thank you.